when it can't nobody hold it. Pop on. Sense podcast is the Rick Ross. He actually talked about Meek Mill joining forces with Rock Nation. Now, when we seen the announcement, everybody thought inquiring minds wanted to know what's, what's up with Rick Ross. What happened to MMG? Because Meek was originally signed to MMG, Wale, Stale, and all of them, and um, it just seemed like you know what happened. Well, Rick Ross did um, address that situation with Ball Alert. Here we go. I hear you. Uh, obviously, Meek Mill, close up. How's it feel to finally get this all out of the way and feel good? How's he uh, man, doing? How's it feel for the fans? Man, it, it feel great, man. He, he, you know, he texts me as soon as he, he put his case behind him. And it, it's, it's been a long fight for him, but everything happened at the right time. You know what I mean? He put his case behind him. Um, I hope that judge learned something from it. You know, he just closed his new label deal, Dream Chasers. Shout out to Jay-Z for seeing the vision in my little bro. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy just for the world getting to see what Maybach music capable of producing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's big. So, I mean, is he looking for you for advice? I mean, you're the one who kind of put him on the map a little bit. And now it's like, what do you think of him as more of like an entrepreneur? He's got the Lids deal. I mean, oh, he's man, doing some of course. crazy he doing things. He's doing a lot of big things. But Meek been doing things from Ethica. He's been doing a lot of things for, for a long time now. But now it's just time to take it to that next level. Same way I did when I got my label deal in 2010 yeah. and signed. While in Meek, he, he doing that now. So I'm proud of him. You know, I'll always be here. And as we know, the Port of Miami 2 about to drop August the 9th, Sandman. What is your take on Rick Raw speaking about Meek Mill signing with Rock Nation and Jay-Z? Well, you asked me yesterday, oh, God, what do I think Rick Ross thought about this? And we, we pretty much said exactly what we both said. He would be happy for him. He's going he's gonna, to – there is no high road to take because it's genuine. He's happy for him. There is no ill feeling. It wasn't any shade. Meek Mill – first and foremost got his personal life in order and taken care of got off the probation is going to finally be able to take his feet and go over to international soil be able to make more money travel take his kids out take that burden off of the chest that i got two strikes and i could be out in any moment huge burden off his chest as a man and as a brother he was happy for him and then to watch him grow as an entrepreneur and to watch what you brought in as a young man blossoming and just growing in in, in himself as a man to finally kind of almost see where all of that's going to go, you know what I mean? To hide of that mountain, it's like, yo, applaud, bravo to you. Rick Ross is often preached in his raps and stuff, feeding the people around you, making sure mm -hmm. everybody's plate is clean. So he's practicing exactly what he preaches. I think anything that he says is genuine right now. I think that it's a positive thing. And I think people that have these labels really need to look at it. Now, Wale had his gripes here and there when it came to Rick Ross. But all in all, MMG was always a solidified unit, giving you great music and, and just always giving you a great solidarity. A lot like your, your G units, even though they were great lyrically, mm -hmm. they always gave you this and your other bands. Mm -hmm. MMG always stays solid and solidified. And, and to watch them grow and branch out. Hey, man, I, I'm glad that Rick Ross came out here, answered it the way he did and, mm -hmm. and going into a great album August 9th. Yeah, and, and it's like um he put them in position, man. You know, like even with like different features with people, mm -hmm. his connects that he had, giving them that foundation coming in that they need. A lot of people would always say, Oh, Meek sold his soul in the beginning and all that. But look, well, I'm I'm telling you, I guarantee you, Meek Mill is forever thankful for Rick Ross for taking him off the streets of Philly and putting him in position. Like, dog, you gotta do it. I ain't gonna do it for you. But I'm, I'm going to give you the avenue. I'm going to give you the fish. I'm going to give you the pole. I'm going to show you where the lake is to go fish. Mm -hmm. I think it's a beautiful thing, man, that um, there's no way you can look for any negative in this at all. It's just one of those things where it's like sometimes you move on. It's like, you know, the NFL and, you know, the person graduates to another team or another level in business. All you could do is be happy. Obviously, you know, Rock Nation has bigger and better things for Meek Mill. He's going to be moving you know, to the 100, 200 million mark, I think now with this move here. So, you know, uh, salute to MMG. Now, what do you think Wale stands? Um, obviously still with them, but um, what do you see his career going from here? Um, I, I think that Wale is still an incredible artist and has a lot of time and a lot of just a lot of still growth and, and a lot of to give us when it comes to music. When you're an incredible lyricist as you are, as Wale is, mm -hmm. you always got music because you're talented. It's not like you're um, a publicity stunt. It's not like somebody's feeding you stuff. It's you. Mm -hmm. I think that he just struggled maybe just to find his lane and that sound that people will relate to as opposed to just giving you what's genuine and real to you. Because anytime I heard a genuine, real Wale that was genuine to him, oh. it was always a banger. 
mm-hmm. always. always. And I can listen to any conversation he has. He's a well-spoken brother that you can sit back and gain something from. Likeable brother. Um, so you want to see somebody like that win. I think he will win. I think that this music business, it just has a way of beating you up and tearing you down. And even the media comparing him to Meek and this and that, and just all these things around him and him almost feeling forced to respond to it can kind of take away from your genius Mm -hmm. and make you not even want to fucking do it. So whether it's music, whether it be in other business ventures that he in, I salute him. I want to see him win. I would love to have him across from us to build and talk to him. Cause like I said, I could listen to any conversation he has Yeah, because he's just one of them people you learn something from each and every time you hear something from. Yeah, shout out to MMG, man. Rick Ross, you know what I mean? He did what he had to do for his artists. Mm -hmm. He just didn't just sign them and just made them do their thing. He was there. He showed up. He was was just with them every step of the way. He made sure that they were able to graduate to the next level. Even Wale, you know, people want to try to compare him to Meek or whatever. He's still in the game. He's still relevant. He still has a shot to really, really blossom into that, you know, uh, 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 premier, premier rapper. Not that he isn't. I think he is obviously skill wise, but you know, people, it's a lot of politics in the game as well with that type of stuff. And that's nobody kissing anybody's ass or anything. We don't know any of these brothers. We the, we, we know Meek a little bit more, even though Meek doesn't know us, just because we watched his career mm-hmm. from an earlier age to where he wasn't the Meek Mill he is today. Mm-hmm. So we got a little bit more of a connection being so close, but we don't know any of these brothers. This is something from looking in hell. While they could be an asshole for all we know, but I still want to see him win. I don't get that kind of vibe from him from the beyond outside looking in and. Hey, man, I want to see that brother win. MMG, salute. Yes, sir. So, yeah, we're definitely excited to see what Meek Mill and Jay-Z are going to come up with. We hear they got some real um, dope, dope projects. Um, Jay-Z investing in a weed business. Jay-Z also putting together a Netflix, you know, um, uh, film or something like that. This is going, man, I'm just loving to see, you know, our people just continue to make, you know, a major, major strides in every industry, man. So, um all you could do is salute it. Yeah, stop, stop complaining and be motivated and grow from it. Learn and, and grind and do it yourself. Yes, sir. But you're tuned into the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast with your host, brother Oh God over here and Sam. And let's jump over here to this next story, Sam, man. Vic Mensa dropped the video just a couple of days ago, and it's got a lot of people talking. As a matter of fact, people on YouTube are not really feeling this one. And um, you can see it, you know, the dress there that he's in. He put a wig on on this one, um, lipstick and everything. Now, before I let you go on on this, Sam, man, I want to explain what Vic Mensa put under his video because he tried to, you know, uh, uh, um, explain his way out of this one. For the people that will see this, probably like most people are going to see it. He said, the three-year sober video is a statement about identity. I put on a Confederate flag dress to be able to laugh at a symbol of hate and play tug of war with Mike Pence over birth control. I had my face written on it ahead of everything. I know what I know people will say about me and had a dinner full of barbecue. Becky's called the police on me for using the woman's bathroom. I know some in hip hop culture will see this day and say Vic's gay, which I'm not. Whereas if I was white, they just say he's a rock star. 93 Punk is about being yourself. Fuck what people think. Vic Mensa. Um, what are your thoughts? You seen the video, you seen, you know, what he's trying to convey with the video, his statement. Do you agree? What's your thoughts? It ain't up to me whether I agree or not. I don't think a man should ever put oh, on man. Come a on, Sam dress. man. I don't think a man should ever put on the fucking dress. Period. You could do what you do, though, I guess. Do what you do. I'm not buying it, but you could do what you do. <laughs> right. Um, there's other ways that you could have could have went about it. And still carried yourself, but you say fuck what people think. So, hey, look, I ride what you fuck what people think. I thought that dress looked crazy though, and that's just my opinion. So you can fuck what I think too. What do you this- say to the people though, Sam? Man, because I had an interesting conversation, you know, with a gentleman the other day, and he was just like, "Man, look," he said, if "Somebody offered you ten million to put on the dress, dress, you know, what I'm saying for a role." He said, Yo, "I would do it." He said, "I know I'm not, you know, gay. I know I'm not this. I'm just doing it to convey a message. I don't see nothing wrong with it." Well, how do you feel about that particular statement? You got a price tag on if if somebody (laughs) gave you $10 million, you put on a dress. And I don't think that every man that puts on a dress is homosexual. I don't. I just don't agree with a man for money or anything else to put on a dress, act like you have titties, because most of the time they act like they have breasts as well. (laughs) Right. 
put on lipstick and makeup and portray in a wig, Finn, a wig and in a wig yeah. and act like a girl. I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Um, but do what you do. Who am I to say that in 2019 that it's wrong? I fucking don't know. I think that 